Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. In case you haven't heard it yet, I recommend that you go back and listen to last week's episode, episode number 69 with Haiti Schleifer. And that's partly because I'm going to offer you a little bit extra based on that conversation. It's not required that you go back and listen to it in order to understand what I talk about today, but um, it will be a helpful, larger context for the conversation. And this episode is going to be a little shorter because it's that busy time of the year for many of us. And uh, that gives you a little extra time to go back and listen to last week's episode. So if you're curious about the episode with Haiti Schleifer, the uh, way you can get to that directly is neilsatin.com slash encounter, uh, or you can just find your way to episode 69 uh, in your podcast app. So great, that's that. And also, in case you haven't yet, I just wanted to remind you that you can download my free guide, which offers you the single most powerful thing to make or break your relationship. In order to do that, you can go to neilsatin.com and just click the Send Me the Action Plan button and enter your details there. Or you can text the word relationship to the number 33444 and follow the instructions and I will send you the guide. I have some new guides coming out in the coming year, so keep an eye out for those as well. And of course, I will announce them here on the podcast as they are ready. Great. So if you listened to last week's episode, then you heard Haiti and I talking about the concept of host and visitor. And in brief, what that means is that it's helpful in your communication with your partner if you remember that you are each two utterly separate worlds unto yourselves. And what this means is that when you're trying to communicate, if you're just um, throwing you land at them and they are throw throwing them land at you, then there's not a lot of opportunity to actually understand each other and communicate. And even in the Imago dialogue process that we talk about with Harville Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt, um, way back in episode number 22, they talk about the importance of defining when you're communicating with your partner, especially when you're communicating about something important. But of course, this can work even when you're communicating about the more trivial things, because those trivial things often lead to conflict and misunderstanding. Um, they talk about the importance of defining who is going to be the sender, in other words, the one speaking primarily, and who is going to be the receiver, the one who is listening and who is whose job it is to understand what the sender is sending. And I like that concept, and I also really like how Haiti takes it a step further with this concept of host and visitor. When you have something to communicate to your partner, you are inviting them into your world. And in order to do that, you have to be a really good host. It's almost as if you're getting a visitor from a foreign land and they have no idea really what the terrain is. You might think that they do because they've lived in your country for any number of months or years. But the truth is that for many, if not most relationships, we haven't taken a ton of time to truly understand each other's language, each other's culture and customs. And judging by the number of times I get emails from people who have just, for instance, stumbled upon Gary Chapman's five love languages and are, are just kind of figuring out, oh, my, my partner really likes acts of service and I'm really more of a touch kind of person, um, then that just shows you how well, what's a, what's a good word here? How unsophisticated we can be in terms of our understanding of our partner. And, you know, I'm right there. This is an ongoing process. It's not like we all ever truly master it, although hopefully we do become more and more fluent in our partner's language. So 
Hades' concept of the host and the visitor means that if you have something to communicate, you are inviting someone into your country and you are being a good host to them. So you want them to understand your language, your culture, your customs, your concepts. But the only way to do that is to not make assumptions about what they know or understand, but to see them as a new visitor with wide open eyes who hopefully is busy uh, doing their best to understand this completely different realm that they've entered. And likewise, if you are the receiver in Imago world, you are the visitor here. It's your job to come in and ask questions and be curious and open-minded and not make assumptions because your assumptions are based on your own culture, your own language, your own customs. And the odds are good that they are not really applicable to what's going on with your partner. Or even if they do apply, they apply but in a very kind of clumsy way. So don't be a clumsy visitor to your partner's uh, country. Um, instead, be gentle, be curious, be an explorer, and be open-minded and open-hearted about what you're discovering. So the next important piece that I wanted to cover is this question of inviting. Because if you are the host, and we all want to be the host a lot of the time, we want to be understood, we want to have our partners acknowledge who we are and what we bring to the relationship, what we bring to them. We want to be loved, we want to be made love with. Like whatever it is, you have desires you, maybe you just want a back rub or maybe you want your partner to ask you how your day was or maybe you want your partner to reliably vacuum the living room. So we've gone from making love to vacuuming the living room and obviously all of that is contained within relationship, which is part of what makes it so amazing and part of what can make it so challenging. So... How do you create an environment as a host where your partner wants to listen to you, where they want to show up for your desires and they want to do it fully with like full dictation, not not reluctantly or not because they have to or or not because they think that's what's going to get them what they want. Um, how do you invite them to participate with you. And that is the concept that I wanted to bring to you today. It's this question of how do you invite your partner to do anything? And that's a lot different than making requests of your partner or making demands on your partner or just uh, sitting down for a business meeting with them and, and figuring out who's doing what on the chore chart. This question of how do you invite your partner hopefully brings about a whole new repertoire of how to interact with your partner. Because when you want someone, for instance, to come to your birthday party or your art opening or your son's piano recital or whatever it is and you invite them, what do you do differently that you might not be doing with your partner when you are making a request or hoping that they show up for you. Because the key to getting your partner to willingly do whatever you want, maybe not whatever, but just about whatever you want, is to encourage them in such a way that, that they're going to want to do it. So I know that sounds a little bit like a catch-22, like you get them to do it by getting them to want to do it. Um, but essentially, that's what the art of invitation is all about. So I would like you to think a little bit about what you do when you're inviting someone to do something with you, whether it's to go skiing or to go out for coffee or to come to dinner at the table. How do you invite someone in a way that makes them curious, that 
sparks their uh, their interest, that sparks their presence, that sparks their playfulness. What can you do to contribute to the conversation so that your invitation doesn't go unanswered? So you actually get, well, if nothing else, an RSVP. I mean, maybe your partner will say, no, thank you. Um, or I'll take a rain check. But odds are that if you master the invitation, then you're going to get your partner to show up in a totally different way than they might have before. It's a little bit like the art of seduction, but not necessarily sensual or sexual because it applies to anything in your life. How do you allow yourself to be open and receptive and to even maybe announce your intentions or your desires in a way that isn't bludgeoning your partner over the head, but instead becomes something that gets them excited or curious or helps them feel included. Like, you don't just want this thing, you want this thing with them. Because that's one of the key aspects of an invitation, right? It's like, who wants to be on a guest list of 500 people where you just feel like you're a number? I mean, I guess if it's, you know, a list of the the who's who of your community or something like that, then yeah, maybe you want to be on that list. But for the most part, I think we all want to be known and valued for who we are. And we want to know that when people want to interact with us, it's because they value who we are. They want to know us. They want to discover what we think about something, how we feel about something. So how can your invitations to your partner really acknowledge who they are as you invite them into your land, into your country, as the perfect host, whether it's the host of your nation or the host of your birthday party or the host of your bed or your kitchen. I think you get the picture. I will be really curious to hear from you with your insights on how things shift for you when you start thinking about how to be a good inviter. And I invite you to email me, neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S at neilsatin.com. I'd love to hear from you. Or you can join us in our Facebook community. It's called the Relationship Alive community. You can find us on Facebook. Just ask to join and we'll approve you, assuming you know, you're know you awesome, which of course you are because you're here with me today. And um, And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime... I'm also really looking forward to the coming year with you. And next week, I'm going to tell you a lot more about what is in store for 2017 in the Relationship Alive podcast. In the meantime, I hope you're having a great day. I look forward to hearing from you with your insights about inviting. And I do encourage you to go and listen to the glorious interview that I had with Haiti Schleifer of Encountered Centered Couples Therapy last week. That's episode 69. And again, you can find it directly on my website, neilsatin.com slash encounter. All right. I hope all is well with you. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Take care.